What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It is your boy, D. Dyson. First off, want to say Happy New Year to all of you. Happy, Happy New Year. And I'm a little under the weather. So, but what I wanted to do was give you guys a top 10 best movies, in my opinion, of 2018. And let's get that started. So, number 10 best movies of 2018, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I like Ant-Man and the Wasp simply because it tells a story with Scott Lang, kind of like the continuation of how he became Ant-Man from Ant-Man 1 and just seeing how he is as Ant-Man, you know, just getting to be Ant-Man and then it just showed that how is his story is, is going to be a story arc and the new Avengers. So I like that and I like how they starting to build up for Ant-Man to be an actual Avenger. So I liked how that came out and can't wait for the new Avengers to come out. Number nine, Deadpool 2. I like Deadpool 2. Uh, the CGI was kind of like, oh, when I saw Juggernaut, but let alone, I saw Juggernaut. When I look at Deadpool, because he's more so in the X-Men universe than the Marvel universe. He's like, he deals with a lot more X-Men. So when I got to see Juggernaut on screen, like the actual Juggernaut, I mean, not the X-Men 3 Juggernaut, which was mediocre at best. You know, you got a, a good CGI juggernaut. He was strong, he was big. He had his little helmet, his whole head, you know. So I, I like that aspect of seeing Juggernaut because Juggernaut was one of my favorite enemies in X-Men as a kid. I'm like, Juggernaut, I had a Juggernaut action figure. That's how I was like, I used to be a, a huge Juggernaut fan because this dude was just unstoppable. He can go through anything. The more you make him angry, the more stronger he gets. Kind of like a Hulk. Yeah, kind of like a Hulk character. Like, the more stronger, you know, he's just getting stronger and stronger, and he's just going through things, you know? So, that was his mutant powers, is being so strong, they called him Juggernaut. So, Deadpool 2 on the number 9. Number 8. It is Jurassic World. Now, a lot of people bash Jurassic World because it's a stupid premise. Like, the plot was dumb, the story was dumb. I, I think so, as well. But I still tell myself, like, hey, it's Jurassic Park. I feel like this is going to be the last Jurassic Park. I really feel that Jurassic World, whatever you want to call it, this is like the last one. I really feel like this is the last one. Although they might make more, this needs to be the last one. It wasn't like before where they did Jurassic World and they did stupid numbers. Nah, this one was really mediocre. I mean, just... If you're going to make a new one, just hold off on it, you know, and I feel like, yeah, this one was pretty good. You know, the dinosaurs are dying. You know, some of the researchers are just trying to snatch the dinosaurs to put them on a new island, you know. So, obviously, they're going to make more, which is, at best, shouldn't be because this is kind of like a, it was on the fence. It was a fence movie. Like, this is a real fence movie. Some people liked it. A lot of people hated it. It was on, It's on that fence, on that final line. Number seven. Won't you be my neighbor? I like this documentary of Mr. Rogers. That is, I'm not going to lie, I teared up because basically you got to see how Mr. Rogers became Mr. Rogers. You know, this guy genuinely wanted to help kids learn and still have fun in the process. Mr. Rogers was a big part of my childhood growing up as for many of kids, many of young adults, many of adults, you know, Mr. Rogers was genuinely a guy who wanted to help. Nowadays, if somebody wanted to help kids, they're going to run his background. They're going to probably make a scandal about him. Oh yeah, he's child abuse or, you know, sexual misconduct with kids, something of that nature. But Mr. Rogers genuinely didn't have anything wrong with him helping kids. So I was like, dude, you a pure soul, you know, and you will be missed. Rest in peace, Mr. Rogers. He, after seeing this documentary, I'm like, dude, you did a lot. You did a whole lot. Like, you did a lot, dude, in your time. And I still, after I saw that, like I said, I cried. Like, I was like, dude, I'm like, 
I didn't understand how much you paved the way for kids to be learning, you know, and you had a soft, gentle voice where a kid could sit down and really just, you know, engage into watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Like, you can, enga like, a kid could be hyper and then hear Mr. Rogers' voice and then he'll sit down and watch Mr. Rogers. I was one of those kids. So I'm like, Won't You Be My Neighbor is a great documentary. If you guys haven't checked that out, please check that out. Number six, Upgrade. If you guys haven't seen Upgrade, you guys need to watch it. Upgrade is about a guy who kind of down on his luck. You know, his wife works for a huge tech company and I believe she got fired or something like that. And then um, he knew this guy who was a huge tech, you know, tech monster, kind of like a Steve Jobs of his time, like a little young guy. And he has this type of, I want to say like system program that he's building, it's kind of like a little brain. And it's just a huge brain that is just controlling the whole society that nobody really knows about is brand new. And he gets in an accident, these guys shoot his wife, paralyzes him and he bring, he gets brung to the, the little tech guy that he knows and then he puts like this little thing in the back of his spine. It's like the system to kind of work his body. So now it's kind of like a, a, a revenge movie with like technology. I want to say they took the premise of Venom, but Venom, Venom took the premise of Upgrade because it's just, you know, the system was talking to him and everything. Like, man, you know, talking to him like, hey, we're going to do this, duck left, hit right. And it's it's so way thought out. And But the ending was whack. The ending was whack, but the whole movie, the, the ride of the movie was bomb. Like, so check out Upgrade. If you if you kind of like Venom, check out Upgrade to see that Venom didn't steal everything from Upgrade. Upgrade is, is up there this year. So check out Upgrade. That was a really, really good movie. It was a movie that was, I want to say, like an underdog movie. A lot of people didn't really watch it. But the for, the, for those who did, they really enjoyed Upgrade. So Upgrade is up there on my top 10 list. Number five. Creed 2. I enjoy Creed 2 because the emotional aspect of Creed 2. You know, you're already going to watch it because it's another Rocky movie. You know, you're watching it because it's a Rocky movie. You got Adonis Creed, you got Rocky, you know, you have Adonis Creed's uh, girlfriend, and then you got Ivan Drago and his son. So you're already watching it based off of, the, off of just that. You know, it's like a continuation from what happened with Rocky IV. So you already have that. I like Creed II because, like I said, the emotional aspect of Creed II, and I did a review on Creed II and I really enjoyed it. It's up there. I liked it because it's up there. A lot of people say that after Creed II, Creed should stop. It's, you know, if you're going to keep that emotional aspect going, it was a lot more emotion than fighting in this movie. So it was a lot more just, you know, acting, drama, and... It was only like two fights, two or three fights in the whole movie. So that's what a lot of people was coming for, you know, and the end fight was really good. You know, looking at Michael B. Jordan going against Ivan Drago's son, Victor Drago, I'm like, yeah, you guys are not even the same weight class. You could tell, but they made it work and we liked it. We all did. Number four, Ready Player One. That took me back to my childhood indefinitely. Steven Spielberg. Robert Zemeckis, Back to the Future, E.T., all of the above. You know, it took you back to the 80s, the 80s nostalgia. And when you go, and I seen when you put the VR headset going into the Oasis, I really felt that something like that is, is, on, the, is on the dawn of happening. That's when I, when I watched that movie, I immediately was like, something like this is going to happen. Where somebody's going to create a virtual reality system for every person on this planet, and that's gonna be a social media type of thing. Has to be, you know? So that's that's just how I looked at that movie, and it just, you're giving the vintage 80s undertone through the whole movie. I like that aspect, you know? I watch that to this day. When it's nothing to watch, and I gotta go to sleep, I'm watching Ready Player One. I'll probably go into like almost 30, 30 minutes, 
to 40 minutes into the movie because I, I always, I, it's just enjoyable to watch. Kids like it, older people like it. Like, it's an enjoyable movie to watch. So, Ready Player One is up there in my top five. Number three, Bohemian Rhapsody. Rami Malek did his thing. Did his thing in Bohemian Rhapsody, which is the biopic of Queen and legendary frontman Freddie Mercury. Rami Malek deserves an Oscar. I know you're going against The Star is Born with uh, Bradley Cooper, but Rami Malek deserves that Oscar. If you haven't watched Bohemian Rhapsody, check it out. And I guarantee you, if you're not even a Queens fan and you watch Bohemian Rhapsody, guarantee you after you leave the movies or after you get done watching it, you're going to want to hear Bohemian Rhapsody. You're going to want to hear all the Queens hits. Another one bites the dust. You want to hear Under Pressure with David Bowie. It's going to make you want to listen to Queen. Point blank, period. That was one of my all-time favorite movies of this year. Number two, Black Panther. Black Panther was number one in my book. Like, Black Panther was number one. Wakanda Forever. Everybody was in a craze for it. Everybody was just digging it. It broke box office numbers. It broke history. It broke all kinds of all kinds of records and everything. And everybody was doing Wakanda Forever for about two months. So I know that that was a good movie. I I seen Black Panther in everybody's top ten. No matter who did a top 10 about movies, Black Panther was definitely mentioned. So, shout out to Ryan Coogler, Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, Lupita Nagonio, Winston Duke, everybody in that cast. That was a picture perfect movie, and I love it because it's all black cast. It's something we've never seen before, and something of that budget and that stature, and it became a successful, successful movie. Shout out to Black Panther, shout out to everybody who's doing that. Number one, the only movie to trump Black Panther was the movie that came out a month and a half after, which is Avengers. Avengers Infinity Wars was definitely something to be talked about for the rest of the year. I told my fiance, I'm like, look, after we watch Infinity Wars, I don't want to watch another superhero movie until Aquaman because basically it left you on the cliffhanger like, damn, Thanos killed half half of civilization, half of everything. And it just left you like, wow, these this is the first time I've ever seen superheroes lose. And then the movie's over. Of course you go into part two, but like, dang, it left you on like, he really killed, you know, Doctor Strange and he killed everybody. It was emotional when he killed, when uh, Peter Parker was dying. Like, you know, he was like, I don't want to, die. oh God, no, I'm like, you know, you, you just felt that like, damn, like they had one job, Star-Lord had one job, not to get angry. I mean, of course he got angry because he killed Gamora, but you just kind of like, wow, wow, really, really, yep, really. So now I'm so looking forward to Avengers Endgame to see the continuation of Infinity Wars to see how they're gonna bring all the superheroes back or who's gonna die, who's gonna live. If you enjoyed my top 10 of 2018, subscribe to my channel, post a comment down below, let's talk about it. I haven't seen A Star Is Born, it should be in my top 10, I haven't seen it, which yeah, I know, shame on me, I should be watching it, but I will check it out and I'll probably give you a, a review on A Star Is Born because I heard it is really, really, really good. Um, as far as other movies, you know, like I said, post a comment down below and let me know if I, you know, missed a movie that was really good this year or should I do a top 10 worst movies of 2018? I can make a list for that too. Just want to say I'm looking forward to the movies in 2019. Can't wait to do more reviews, more reactions to trailers. And like I said, post a comment down below. Let me know if, if this is what you guys want to see or what type of movie you want me to react to or review let me know let's talk subscribe to my channel like this video it is your boy d dyson peace and welcome to 2019